Hi, it's Dwyer. It's March the 21st, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Lawrence Okole's acquisition of the cruiserweight title. His win over Christoph Glovaki. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I recognize from the comments before the fight that many of you were supporting Lawrence Okole in his quest to become cruiserweight champion. I was not one of them. I lost on this fight. I took Christoph Glovaki. I thought style-wise this was a winnable fight for him. I also liked the odds, right? This was in a sense an odds play since I was getting a plus 260. Now while the rest of the world may have been bored by this fight, if you're a handicapper, if you're a gambling type, you were riveted, riveted by first, who is Lawrence O'Coley? What are his prospects of having a long reign at cruiserweight? Right, this was an introduction fight for many. His first big step up as a pro to world-class competition. Also, just the styles. You knew Okole uses length in terms of has ring coverage. Doesn't use his height. But you understand that he has power that carries. You also understood that he has an excellent jab. You knew that Glovaki was a southpaw. You knew that Glovaki is above average defensively. You knew that Glovaki had vastly more experience. Well, let's talk about what surprised me in the fight. The first thing was I thought, looking at the film, that Akoli was going to fall apart. Akoli strikes me as a bully, right? He's 6'5". He's typically taller than his opponent. Right? He is a knockout puncher. His game is really to hit you, hurt you, if you jump inside, grab you. Right? That's his game. Didn't think he was that advanced. So I thought Glovaki was going to get Okoli, the bully, on his back foot. And then I thought Okoli, over time, was going to fall apart. Right, was accustomed to blowing guys out, wouldn't quite know what to do when he's not alpha in the ring. Now, I was wrong. Let me point out that Glovaki does come on his front foot. He's actually the person pursuing Okoli. Okoli, who I didn't really view as having great lateral movement, is moving to his right, and it's an interesting decision. Because he's fighting a southpaw, so he's moving into the southpaw's dominant hand. But he's moving to his right. He has his right hand cocked. And he has Glovaki dealing with his jab. He's dictating spacing. Keeping Glovaki outside. I was surprised that that lasted the entire fight. He had it going early. I was just waiting for the dam to break. I thought surely Glovaki fighting in the United Kingdom would have to figure that he's not going to win on the scorecards. Not against an unbeaten British fighter who, let's face it, is landing more punches from distance. He has the jab. He has the Judge pleasing jab. Right? So it's British crowd and it's a judge pleasing opponent style. So you thought Glovaki is going to start to up the ante relatively early. He couldn't let the first half of the fight get away from him. He had to change the dynamic. He couldn't do so. We'll talk about why, but let's just say this. Without really having to move to his left, while moving to his right predictably, while shooting a jab, while having his dominant right hand planted up against his chin, cocked, ready to throw, 
Lama Tsukoile was able to win round after round. Right? Glavaki just wasn't able to jump inside and do anything meaningful. A second thing that surprised me, and I was surprised by this, was I see a six foot five guy and he weighs 200 pounds. I don't care who he is. And I'm thinking, oh, this guy has to be weak to the body. Right? Folks, I weigh more than 200 pounds. And I'm not 6'5". Right? You show me the 28-year-old who's 6'5", weighing 200 pounds. I'm looking at a guy who starved himself to make weight. I'm figuring there's not a lot of blubber covering his midsection. Not a lot of cushion there. He's going to feel the shots. Now, he's in against a shorter guy who is coming forward. I thought, okay, well, it's a matter of time before Glavaki slips the jab, gets inside, runs up to Okoile, and, start, o -O -Koli, and starts to work his body. Even if Okoile grabs him, I thought if... Glovaki got inside, he would just continue to let his hands go. Right? He would make sure that as he's clinched, his hands are free to continue to hit the other guy in the body. To my surprise, Glovaki was not able to get to Okoli's body that much. Okoli dictated distance. That was a key factor in the fight. Now let's talk about why this fight was excellent. Just in terms of styles, you wonder how guys are going to do things. You understood that with Okoli's jab, Glavaki couldn't have his head up. He couldn't ignore the jab. He couldn't come in and allow himself to get hit with a bunch of jabs. So he comes out and he's crouched. He has his head down. He has his chin tucked. He has his hands up around his face to block a jab. He's leaning back. I thought it was really well done. He had his head in a position where he wasn't getting hit with a lot of jabs. Okoli throws the jabs. I know on the telecast, I was watching The Zone, they had two British guys doing the telecast. I know on the telecast, they made it sound like Glavaki was getting hit with a lot of jabs. I saw his hands up. I saw him catching a lot of jabs with his hands. At a minimum, at a minimum, I saw him absorbing some of the blow of the jab with his guard. Also, because he's down, Okoli had to throw the jab down a little bit, right? He's fighting a shorter opponent who's crouched. I thought that took some of the sting out of the jab. So I thought Okoli wasn't able to hurt Glavaki with the jab. I didn't see Glavaki's head snap back that often. But understand, a jab serves many purposes. Okoli, by throwing the jab, is able to maintain distance. That jab is enough, whether it's blocked or not, to keep Glavaki outside. So Glavaki has great head placement, but he still has to deal with this rhythmic jab that's winning Okoli the rounds. That's keeping Glavaki away from Okoli's body. Let me also say, too, that while Glavaki, who's in his 30s, had spectacular head placement to me, I liked his strategy. Right? Hide his head, come in low, or protect his head, come in low, try to get close enough to Okoile and then throw a counter right hand, a chopping right hand, 
Lavaki's lead hand since he's a southpaw. In other words, you notice there were a few times where Glavaki, who was very patient, who's trying to cut off the ring, gets close enough to Okoile where he tries to throw a chopping right hand. His right hand's closest to Okoile, right? And you understood, Okoile was aware of it because that right hand didn't land, right? Okoile would see Glavaki getting close, then he would move just as Glavaki was trying to throw the counter. In other words, Okoile would play games with the lead to time the counter, right? When a guy's relying on a counter, he's dependent on the punch you're throwing, what he's going to counter. Okoli knew it, right? So you'll notice in the fight, at times, Glavaki gets close, then tries to throw a chopping right hand. You'll notice that it doesn't land. I believe that was a key part of his plan. But what really hurt him? And maybe this has to do with his age. And he's not that old, folks, right? The guy's under 35 years old was while he had great placement of his head, right? He had his head in a place where he's blocking shots, right? The head, he's not standing tall. He's standing low. He's leaning back. While his head was in the right place, he didn't have head movement, Right? He wasn't playing a game where he's moving his head. I want people to think about Prime Mike Tyson. Right? I want people to think about Canelo right now. A guy who's there, but then you notice occasionally he's moving his head. The lack of head movement hurt Glavaki badly. I was surprised by it. Because he wasn't able to take over the rhythm of the fight. In other words, when a guy starts moving his head, when Mike Tyson starts moving his head, you don't know if he's going right or left on you. So as you throw a jab, and I'm not talking about the Tyson who runs into Buster Douglas, that Tyson is already past his prime. Right? Tyson to me is only in his prime in the 1980s when he's just starting out, when he first gets the belt, right? Around the time when he's beating Larry Holmes, when he's beating Michael Spinks, that's Prime Tyson. Right now, Prime Tyson controlled the rhythm of the fight. In other words, it's not the guy with the jab who's going boom, boom, boom. You can have your head in the right position and stuff, but the guy with the jab is setting up distance and stuff. It was Tyson who was trying to slip the jab, get inside, right? Think Tyson, Larry Holmes. It felt like Larry was on the clock, didn't it? And Larry had a great jab. Well, here I was expecting Glavaki, especially against a much less experienced fighter in Okoli. I was expecting Glavaki to move his head a lot. He has his head low, he's leaning back, okay, great. Now we needed some of this, right? Have, have the guy throwing the jab wondering, wow, if I throw this jab and he slips the jab, am I ready for him to come inside? Right? Glavaki, who has great head placement, doesn't have great head movement. The guy setting the rhythm of the fight is Okoli. You didn't get the feeling Glavaki was going to slip a jab, then be inside, be a menace, land some body shots on that 6'5", 200-pound body. You didn't get that. The rhythm of the fight is always established by Okoli. Let me also say, too, that David Hay. Lennox Lewis, Canelo. These are guys who have a move where when they're in a stagnant fight and the other guy is, you know, moving the same way and winning the fight on points and stuff to disrupt it 
and you saw this in the Golovkin Canelo rematch. To disrupt it, a Canelo or a Lennox Lewis would do this too. Would just throw big shots. In other words, the fight's stagnant. A rhythm has broken out that favors your opponent. Sometimes it's best to just throw a home run shot. Just throw it, just to disrupt the fight, just to remind the opponent, hey man, I got this, I got this punch. Now someone's going to have to explain to me in the comment section of this YouTube video how Okoli could be continually moving toward Glavaki's dominant left hand and how Glavaki was so tight that he never just randomly throws some big shots with his left hand. Just to remind the guy who's moving toward it, player, you're moving into danger. This part of the pond is shark infested. Right? Why didn't why didn't Glavaki wake up the judges? They're watching a fight. The taller fighter is keeping the other guy outside with a jab. He's moving outside. He's keeping the shorter guy away from his body. After a while, the judges get lulled to sleep. They start writing in the taller fighter's name on their scorecard out of habit. Don't you want to wake up the judges, have them think, Oh, man, that's right. Glavaki has... A big left hand. Glavaki doesn't do that. Right? He is too content with letting the pattern establish itself. He does nothing to break the rhythm. There's no big punch thrown just to shake things up. Right? The punch doesn't even have to land. You're just throwing a big punch just to remind people, hey, I have a big punch. Hey, I'm not afraid to swing for the fences occasionally. Right? Glavaki brings none of that kind of energy into the fight. Right? None of it. So I, I'm i still a skeptic of Okoli. I'll be blunt. I saw him leaning over the pocket. I saw him giving away his height. He has ring coverage. But the punches I saw were a jab and that straight right hand. I applaud him on the KO. Right? The fight is one-sided. It's an interesting contrast in styles. I applaud him on the KO. He doesn't go high with it. He throws the right hand toward Glavaki's chin, which is low. And he catches Glavaki in a moment where Glavaki's covering up the top of his head but not the bottom of his head. Punch lands flush. It's a KO. Obviously, Okole is a major puncher. Right? In the pre-fight video, I talked about how a key punch in this fight was going to be Okole's jabs to the body. He didn't even need to jab to the body that much to keep Glavachi outside. But yet, that KO punch was straight and it was low, right? It wasn't a high punch. It hits Glavachki in the head. But Gl Glavachki has his head low, right? Perfectly placed, excellent KO. I like the stoppage. It's clear that Glavachki, who went the distance with Alexander Usyk, wasn't able to make it into the second half of the fight against Okoli. So I lost on this fight. I was flying naked. I took the plus 260 on the underdog. Did not have a hedge. Right? So I lost on this fight. The Okoli crowd, let me congratulate you. Let me just say, it's interesting too because Okoli's coming along at the right time. Right? I think uh, Usyk is now heavyweight. 
Maris Breedis is reevaluating what he wants to do. Marco Huck and Steve Cunningham are past their prime. Right? Okole is here at the right time. But I will say, he still looks green to me. I would have been more impressed if I saw him going to his left as well as his right. I would have been more impressed if I saw a wider assortment of punches. He's very reliant on the jab. Right? He was lucky he was fighting a guy who was willing the fight who was willing to have the fight be slow enough where he was able to park and keep cocked his right hand right by his chin. Right? The fight never got fast and unwieldy where he actually had to disengage that right hand, not have it be cocked. Right? Also, let me say this too. His punches are straight. I wonder if an elite opponent could make the fight a rough and tumble affair where Okole actually has to start looping his punches. I'm not sure if he can do that. Now, all of that said, I congratulate him. He is the Cruiserweight Champion. He is still unbeaten. He got this title by exclamation mark, right? With a KO in the middle rounds of a fight he was dominating. I was wrong on this one, and I congratulate the followers here, the supporters of Lawrence Ocoli. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.